into the video. So I'm going to talk about my experience working in data and I have worked in about four data roles. So I've worked as an analyst, I've worked as an engineer, I've worked in analytics engineer, and finally I've worked as a data scientist. I'm going to try to keep this video short and sweet, but I'm going to basically just talk about my experience working in these roles and why I would choose one role over another. So let's start with the data analyst role. What was my experience like working as a data analyst? As a data analyst, I did a lot of data cleaning. I heavily would take data from different data sources um, and load into the data warehouse. I worked in multiple industries. Um, and so with each industry, it just depends on the team that I'm supporting as an analyst. My responsibilities would differ, but it primarily would be cleaning data, helping load data into the data warehouse, building dashboards and reporting, helping support stakeholders that didn't have the data expertise that I had. Those were really high level what I did as a data analyst. And it can differ, you know, there could be ad hoc reports that you have to do. There could be so many other things that you have to do, but the tools that I used, I used a lot of SQL, I used a lot of Excel, Google Sheets, not Python. I started using Python when I started working in the analytics engineering role, but my analyst experience, SQL, Excel, Power BI, Tableau, and then just like really great communication skills, uh, being able to just work properly with people and all that good stuff. So for my analytics engineer role, this role was very interesting. This is the role that kind of introduced me to like DBT and Python. I heavily did a lot of data modeling in this role. Um, in this role, I was supporting supply chain and it was just basically helping them do the migration from Postgres to Snowflake. And my primary responsibility was building the tables in dbt and so i did a lot of data modeling i built a lot of dimension tables i built a lot of fact tables i did like backfills i did like a lot of data manipulations i didn't really do a lot of like the scheduling and anything outside of like modeling the data so my primary responsibility was just like building the tables using dbt and um, so the tools that i used were dbt snowflake python ginger <laughs> you know and other like communication tools obviously you would have to like understand the requirements i worked in a team so we had like daily stand up it was scrum and then what else did we do it was really great because i got to fall in love with like data even more i got to become even more proficient with C like when i was doing analysis i actually worked with python and i would do that when i received like weird data sources. I remember this one use case where we had received a data source in a PDF file, like the business units we're working with had sent us like PDF files. And I, we just had to like use Python to kind of turn that into like data. That was my analytics engineering experience heavily modeling data. I didn't do anything outside of modeling. So you need to really know data modeling. If you want to work as an analytics engineer, you need to know DBT. I worked heavily in DBT. That's how I learned DBT. And then obviously Git, cause you know, you're in the data warehouse version control, you're working in a code base pretty much. Um, and yeah, all that good stuff. The next up, the data engineering role. Again, in this role, my primary responsibility was supporting a team that didn't really have any data background. But in this role, I was also helping migrate data from Postgres again to Snowflake. So very similar to what I did in analytics engineering. But this time around, I touched Airflow. Like it wasn't just Post uh, DBT and SQL and Jinja and Snowflake like the first time. I had to actually like schedule DAGs. So I worked with Airflow. I had to, I had to schedule DAGs. I had to like backfill tables. I had to like do a lot of exploratory work because you know, you have to make sure that the data in the legacy is the same as where you're moving the data to. Um, and if you don't understand any of the things I'm saying, because you know, you're not used to the terminologies. I think it's still okay that you just continue to hear these terminologies because the more you hear about them, the more it makes sense when you actually like 
get to work with them. So it's not, it's going to be like buzzwords. Like when I say legacy, legacy system just means like old system and things like that. But the more you actually like indulge, the better you get at it. So indulge. Okay. And yeah, in, engineering was not something that I enjoyed. I'm going to say it again and again and again, but it was a really great experience. I learned so much in that role. Again, there was obviously like a code base, um, version control, Git, all that good stuff. You know, the regular uh, building tables, scheduling DAGs, you know, just like all the data transformation and all the manipulation and all the, all the crazy stuff. I don't enjoy migration because it just like requires like out the older code base was just a whole mess and we had to take that jargon and translate it into gold in the new code base so it was it was really challenging but it was also like such a huge learning process lastly data science my favorite role i obviously love data science i've been wanting to work as a data scientist at this point i had done like analytics engineering so when i got my data science job i was like yes we made it what was this job about it was you know obviously me helping to pre-process data <laughs> for the model again i didn't think i was going to do any pre-processing but i actually had to pre-process data for the model I did a lot of experimentation. I did a lot of research because at the end of the day, we couldn't really deploy anything that so we had to do a lot of testing before we put any, before we deployed anything in the production. So obviously a lot of experimentation. I did, like I built a lot of models just like on my, in my notebook, in my small terrain, doing a lot of experimenting with like small sample sets to try to see if it makes sense before we eventually push it to the prod. I learned unit testing in that role. So I worked with very technical people, people that had PhDs, people that were in software engineers for like so many years. I was feeling like an imposter in this role, guys, because I'm like, how did I get here? Like, there's so many smart people here. <laughs> but it was such a great learning experience for me. And I just want to use this opportunity to encourage anybody who is now starting their journey and regardless of where you are, just continue learning. For me, it wasn't always a rosy experience. I definitely had a lot of challenges, you know, even though I've been through like a lot of roles or like a lot of companies, there were so many challenges that came with me finding myself in these spaces. I'm very thankful to God that I found myself. If you have any space. technical question, I'm happy to answer you. I think that I really like that I'm finally making it here on YouTube because I want people to realize that I'm not actually a career coach. I just like find resources and I share it on Instagram for people who are interested in learning. But my primarily, I'm a, I'm a technical techie, okay? I am actually that technical. I've worked like with engineers and data scientists and like been in those like, technical, technical thing. Now, do I want to do that moving forward? No, I think I want to like, as I'm progressing in my career, I definitely see myself doing things that require more softer skills. And yeah, let me know what you want to see with regards to videos around just being technical and or like data analyst, data engineer, data analytics engineer, and just anything with regards to like the data role itself. Let me know if you have any questions, what you want to see, and I'm happy to answer to the best of my knowledge. Okay, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. It definitely helps me to continue to show up here and good luck on your journey. Bye.